A lot of my time on Dorico right now is spent creating lecture materials and worksheets in preparation for online teaching this coming semester in the college that I teach in. I have been on Dorico version 3.1 since early April and have been creating educational materials for almost two months exclusively on this version of Dorico. This video shows my process in creating lecture materials and will mainly feature the engrave mode as it is where most of my time is spent laying out text, graphics, and accompanying music examples. Before we get into setting up our pages for the lecture material, let's start off by adding an instrument. Since I'm also teaching bass, let's pick bass guitar as our instrument for this example. Select Add Solo Player after you start a project and search bass guitar. In this case, it's a four string bass guitar. For my music examples and diagrams, I don't need to show the instrument name at the beginning of the staff. For this, I go to Layout Options right here in the lower part of the Layouts window, or type the shortcut Shift-Command-L. I make sure that I'm choosing the Layout Options of the full score. I normally won't be needing the bass guitar part in creating lecture materials. After this, go to Staves and Systems, Staff Labels, and click on None for both staff labels on first system and subsequent systems. Click Apply. Uh, I also don't want to see the flow title on each flow because I will be custom labeling each of my frames. For this, go to the page setup part of the layout options and go to Flows. From here, click on Never on Show Flow Headings. Click Apply, and Close. Before getting started on any writing, it's good practice to set up how your first and succeeding pages will look and what information will constantly appear on each page. For this, we have to set up our master pages. Master pages work like templates that you set ahead of writing anything to make your lecture materials look consistent every time. Let's now switch to engrave mode and set up our master pages. On the lower right hand side of the engrave mode is the master pages panel. Double click to edit the one labeled first as it pertains to the master page of the first page in your material. In this case, we want to have the freedom to add any type of frame that we want. So let's proceed by deleting the music frame, which is this blue frame. Then, I would like to edit the contents of the text frame, the ones in green, so that the appropriate information is reflected whenever I put in the project information. Let's remove this composer text frame, as well as this copyright frame. Let's also change the lyricist token to subtitle. Double click, select all, right click, and choose project info subtitle. I'll also change the justification of the project title to align left. In addition, I also add my logo and project date on the lower part of the page. Click on the frames icon here and select the graphics frame. And then, click and drag the approximate size of the graphics frame and double click on the frame to select the graphics file. Next, Click on the Insert Text Frame icon and approximate the size on the lower right hand part of the page. Double click the frame, right click, and select Current Date. I prefer the current date to be right justified. Now that I have the general look of my first page, I make sure to copy it on the right page so that if my first page lands on the left or right, 
it would still look the same. Just click this icon on top and the left hand first master page is copied to the right hand first master page. Click apply to save the changes. Now let's go to editing the look of the succeeding pages. For the succeeding pages, I would need to show the project subtitle and the page number on the top part of the page. Double click the master page indicated default to edit succeeding master pages. Again, I would like to remove the existing music frame so that I have total control of what's contained in a specific page. Select the blue frame and hit delete. Then, instead of having a flow title token on the top part of the page, I would like to change it to a subtitle token. Double click, select all, right click, and select project info subtitle. Now, if you've noticed, the only difference between the left and right page is the music frame. I would not want to copy the left master page to the right master page because of the placement of the page number. Instead, I would just delete the music frame in the right master page. Click apply and close. If you end up having a black blank screen, just add a page using the insert page button in the pages panel. Make sure to use the first master page for page one. Click OK. Now, as you can see, the project title is in the correct position. The subtitle is still blank as we have yet to add a subtitle. My logo is at the bottom part of the page along with the current date. One thing that I had trouble figuring out at first are frame constraints. These locks here at the left hand part of the screen when you click the frame icon. These constraints come in handy when you need to print your material on different paper sizes. If we look at the frames that we have created, let's say this graphics frame at the bottom of the first master page, all constraints are active. If we then check the properties window, we can see the distance of each of the frame sides from their corresponding margins. If we then decide to change the paper size for any reason, the frame will be locked to those distances, which may result in something you did not intend. As we can see in this case, we switch from an A4 paper size to a much shorter letter size. Having locked all sides of the frame to these distances makes the frame all squished up. So let's undo that. What we can do then is choose which sides to unlock and which sides to lock so that the frame adapts to whatever page size we have. In the case of the graphics frame, we can lock the distance of the bottom and left side of the frame to the left and bottom margin while unlocking the top and right side of the frame. Notice in the properties panel that the top and right distance is now disabled, while the height and width of the frame can now be changed. This change in constraints now gives the frame an anchor to the lower left part of the page, while maintaining its frame height and width. Notice now that even if you change to a smaller paper size, The frame is anchored to the lower right part of the page without unexpected frame deformations. After setting up how our materials will look, let's now start adding all our content to the page. Let's first add the appropriate information. In my case, I usually write the subject title and the lecture week at the top of every lecture material I prepare. To do this, Go to File, Project Info, or use the shortcut Command I. Then type in the project title and subtitle. Click Apply and Close. 
Now we can see the title and subtitle correctly appear in the text frames. To add text, just click on the frames button and click on the insert text frame icon. I usually just approximate at first the size of the text frame and edit later. For this example, I'll just be copying one of the lecture materials I have already made. To add music examples, it's best to have one flow per example to have maximum control on how each one appears on the page. Go back to setup mode and add additional flows as needed. In my case, I would need five flows for five music examples. You can rename each flow by double clicking on the flow title. After setting up the number of flows that I needed, I then go back to engrave mode and create my music frames. Click the frames icon and click on the insert music frame button. Click and drag again and approximate the size of your music frame. In a music frame, we have these tabs at the upper left part of each one. The first one contains the frame chains. Frame chains is when you want your music to flow across separate music frames. In this case, we won't be needing to change this as the music that will be written is not that long. The number beside it is the frame order, which pertains to the order the music will flow from one frame chain to the next. Filter by flow is what we need to take a good look at. This is the one that tells us what flow is contained in a specific music frame. In this case, I want the first flow, which I named 1, to show up in this frame. So I put a check on the checkbox beside the name 1. Filter by players is when you only need a specific set of players appearing in one flow. But in this case, we're not concerned of this as you only have one instrument or player. Let's now type in our music example. Don't forget to go to write mode for this. Continue adding frames and changing the filter by flows until you feel that the page is maximized. After filling up the first page, we need to add a second page to continue creating new music frames to complete our lecture material. Go back to engrave mode, and on the pages panel, click on the insert page button. Click on the number of pages that you need, then click on at end of layout. Choose Default master page instead of first for your succeeding pages. Repeat adding text, music, or graphics frames until you finish your lecture material.
I have found that creating lecture materials in Dorico is much easier than my previous notation software, where I have to screenshot my music and import it to a word processing app. Here, I can do everything without leaving the program. Master Pages also makes it easy to have consistent looking lecture materials. This is JC Magsalian, and see you all next time for another workflow video.